Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hey, welcome back to Journeys. And boy, do we have a journey for you today. Get, get your hiking boots on because uh, we're really going to be uh, moving along. Uh, we're very happy to have our guest, Dr. Jack Heitner, with us today. And uh, we'll just go right into it. Jack, tell us, go take us back to the beginning, chapter one. Where are you from? Where were you born? I was born in uh, Brooklyn. Like uh, Bernie. <laughs> like Bernie. <laughs> and uh, so you grew up in Brooklyn or? No, I got out of there when I was one year old, actually. Moved to Jersey. And how, how was that? How was uh, the growing up in Jersey? What, what was that like? Was it? Uh... Well, um, before I could remember very much, uh, my father was a traveling salesman. We traveled with him out uh, as far as... Uh, Duluth, Minnesota, and uh, we got snowed in there, and we never got to California. We're heading, heading for California. Well, uh, how was it, how was it uh, as a young boy, young guy, how was it g growing up? I, I, I assume that your father was probably off on the road a lot. Right. Uh, did, did you have, do you remember have, being kind of... Uh, sad about that or you missing or did no, you kind of just, just roll with the punches there? Just or? normal. It was just, yeah, and, it was uh, normal. We uh, came back from uh, Duluth and I, I started uh, school uh, in Duluth, Minnesota actually and uh, went, went to school uh, a bit along the way, but mostly uh, in Montclair, New Jersey when we got back. Now you're talking about high school? No, uh, grammar school. Uh, grammar school. Hi high school, uh, we bought a house on Long Island and uh, lived in Belmore, New York. Uh, uh, I went to Mepham High School, one of the best wrestling schools in the country. I did a little wrestling there. Oh, wow. At uh, Mepham High School. And, and at, at Hofstra, which is also on Long Island. So were you, would you say you, got a, you were a pretty good student? Uh, were you... No, I was a very bad student uh, until uh, <laughs> uh, I w went into the Marines and learned some discipline. And uh, then I became a, an honor student uh, well, what, going back to Hofstra. What, what, uh, after you got out of high school, is that when you enlisted in the Marine Corps? Uh, I, I started at, at Hofstra, and I was still a bad student then. Uh, and, uh, had had uh, I, we couldn't afford to uh, pay the tuition, so uh, I withdrew and joined the Marines. I, I ended up with seven Fs because uh, <laughs> I couldn't take. They wouldn't let me take the final exams actually because we owed the money, and. Uh, but when I, 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 I corresponded with them and they changed them, the Fs, and uh, I went back to Hofstra when I got out and uh, was an honor student uh, after that. Well, this was, uh, this was during, during the, around, around the Korean War that you were in the Marines, right? Yeah, I was during the Korean War. Uh, and you were and in I, the Marines? I went through uh, Army <clears throat> Jump School. Uh, these are my jump wings. Uh, yeah, yeah. Show, show. Uh, can you, can you? Where, where, where's okay, a good well, place we, to hold them? <laughs> uh, no, that's good. That's fine. Those are your. So you jumped out of, you jump, parachuted out of planes. Yeah, yeah. You make five jumps in jump school to qualify as a parachutist. I made another one uh, at Fort Lee uh, when I became a, a parachute rigger. You have to. The final exam is 
is jumping with a chute that you packed yourself. And you were a drill sergeant. No, I, I was a, um, I applied for OCS and uh, went through officer's screening and, uh, and then officer's basic and the Korean War ended when I, at, uh, while I was in officer's basic school. And um, then I, I was in air delivery for a while as an enlisted man and then I went into the infantry as, a, as an officer. And after you got the wars ended and you're out of the Marine Corps, what, what, we come I, back to civilian. Went back to Hofstra. Okay, and you, wasn't there somewhere along the line you you became a police officer? Or yeah, Jones while, Beach? while I was going to Hofstra, I got the highest uh, mark on the civil service exam for police police officer uh, at uh, the Long Island State Park and Parkway Police. And uh, they became, later became part of the New York State uh, Police. And then at what point, when did you finally, where'd you get your undergraduate degree? At Hofstra? Hofstra. And then I went to Cornell for my master's and the University of Rochester for my PhD. What did you get your PhD in? In English. In English. And I know you've written some poetry books. Yeah, well, the English is, is mostly literature. It's composition as well as literature. You know. So you go from a wrestler, a marine guy, jumping out of airplanes, training, training marines, being a police officer, and you go from that to being a, a, a poet. It's almost yeah. like incongruous. How, how, do, how, do they, how do they match up with each other? Well, uh, poets are, are not necessarily wimps. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we, we um, you know, there are all kinds of poets, and some, uh, some are tough guys. One of the, uh, the uh, leading poets in, in Connecticut was a, was a really uh, rough character. Well, Ernest Hemingway, uh, right? He was a well. Hemingway, yeah, was a writer, and he wrote poetry as well. Yes. Yeah, he was a he was a macho dude. Yeah, was he right? Right. He was, well, so okay, so you you got your your, your PhD. Where did, where did you wind up? Uh, where did you wind up teaching? I I taught um, at uh, Albany State for for three years, and then at Central Connecticut for. Well, I ended up teaching about 51 years altogether. 51 years, and most of it, 49 or so, were at uh, Central Connecticut. Yeah, at CCSU. And what did you teach at Central? What subjects did you teach? Well, I wrote my doctoral dissertation on, on Melville, uh, uh, who wrote his most famous novel, of course, is, is Moby Dick. and. Uh, uh, of course, they have the readings at Mystic. I, I read, um, I, was, I, I got a dramatic chapter to read, which was a, a, a great thing. I, uh, you know, if you can read dramatically, it's much more exciting. They have 24-hour readings of Moby Dick at Mystic Seaport. And uh, I, I read, uh, I think it was chapter 37. Uh, and you're, and you... Uh, you also taught, I know, uh, you also taught a very, what must have been a very fascinating course every year on uh, mysticism in literature. Yeah, that was the one I developed um, more fully by, uh, on my own. Uh, Melville, you know, in some ways is cut and dried in terms of his, his writings, Moby Dick and Billy Budd especially. But uh, I uh, developed courses in... Uh, Mysticism in American literature and mysticism in world literature. And what were some of the sources that you drew upon for, for the, the mysticism aspect of it? Um, well, um, there are many um, mystical teachings. Uh, the, the, the greatest one, as far as I'm concerned, is Ekinkar. Uh, I've, I've been in Ekinkar for many years. And uh, 
It's, it's the world's most ancient spiritual teaching. What, uh, what very briefly, what is, what is Ekankar? Is that a spiritual, would you call yeah. it a religion or is it well, a Well, it's, um, it's a religion. Um, it's an ancient, very ancient religion as a matter of fact. It goes way, way back. And um, um, go, uh, the Ek masters have been with mankind uh, for, uh, since uh, our beginnings. Uh, and I have developed, uh, helped us to develop spiritually. What does Ekankar, what is that, what's the etiology of Ekankar, the word? Uh, ek means uh, the spirit of God in all things. That's the Ek. And uh, Ekankar is the ancient spiritual teaching uh, going way, ba way back before Hinduism, before uh, Judaism before uh, any of the uh, ancient, uh, most ancient spiritual teachings. What would you say is the, the overriding, overarching <coughs> uh, message uh, that, <coughs> that Ekin Karin imparts to people? What is it that they emphasize in, the, in their in the, in the they Ekin, emphasize, Ekin practice? Uh, the Godness in, in all of us, uh, the Spirit of God in all things, and uh, our development toward uh, spiritual perfection. Does that match up in your mind? Does that match up with uh, some of the other Eastern philosophies like Buddhism? Uh, yeah. Is there a, um, a certain overlap? Uh, reincarnation is a very important element uh, in uh, Hinduism, in uh, uh, the Kabbalah of Judaism, uh, in uh, some uh, Christian teachings, uh, in Buddhism, uh, we learn through each lifetime we, now, spiritually. Beside the by, beside then the ek, the ek, ek and kar aspect, the Kabbalah and the other mystical writings are those sources that you employed in your course, mysticism and literature. Or did you yeah. also refer to, the, aren't there some um, poets and authors who were also considered yeah. very mystical in, oh, their, yeah. in their writings? Yeah. Who um, would name a few. William Blake is one of the great uh, spiritual, mystical uh, English poets. Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright. Yeah, the tiger is, is his most famous poem, probably, that you've uh, learned, right? You've uh, memorized it. And uh, uh, Whitman, of course, a song of myself. Uh, Whitman is one of the great American spiritual poets. Leaves of grass. Wasn't wasn't didn't he say something about see the see the universe in a grain of sand or? That's Blake. Yeah. That was Blake. Just That's very to holographic. See the world in a grain of sand, and a and a heaven in a wild flower. Old infinity in the palm of your hand, and eternity in an hour. Yeah, that that is very, very mystical, mystical spiritual, yeah. very spiritual. Well, so <clears throat> aside from from that, we could talk for hours about that. But you were you were you've done a lot of extensive traveling. Yes, um, um, I think I probably took the the greatest uh, sabbatical of uh, any professor. I, I, went, went, I was invited to lecture in China, and that was halfway around the world, so I decided to keep on going. <laughs> and uh, here's a map of, uh, of my journey uh, around the, the world. How many countries did you go to? Uh, four, uh, 14 countries. I've got it on here somewhere. Over what period and, of time? And uh, 20, uh, 20 cities, I think, or 21 cities. Over what period of time? Um, 83 days. Uh, Around uh, the world. Phineas Fogg beat me by uh, <laughs> three days. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. And you've got some, uh, uh, you've got some pictures that we'll, we'll, we'll show at various places. Yep. Uh, could you just, can you, uh, this one, you just mention, uh, mention a few of them? Is... Um, the highest mountains in the world, in Kathmandu, they have 
the Himalaya View Hotel. If you go there and, and get up early enough in the morning, uh, you can get the uh, Mount Everest and the highest Kanchenjunga, the highest peaks uh, in the world. Uh, this, we, we got sunrise over, over um, Mount Everest there. And um, this is a safari we took uh, at Kathmandu, uh, one elephant safari. Uh, <laughs> Kim was a little nervous. Uh, she was my traveling companion. Later became uh, Miss Bristol. Uh, this is uh, um, cha a picture of Chairman Mao. Uh, on the Forbidden City, the Emperor's Forbidden City. Uh, and this was a year after the uprising in China. Uh, there were police out with um, submachine guns, and the students were smart enough not to try, try uh, another uprising. Uh, now, what year was this? We were there. What year? Uh, that was a, a ni 90. Uh, uh, 1990, when we were there, and um, this was uh, rock climbing. This is the the student who taught me uh, how to rock climb. One of my students, Mark um, Simpiglia, and uh, this is uh, Chi uh, Cairo and the uh, Great Pyramid, sunrise. Uh, sunset behind the Great Pyramid. Um, and this is um, in Athens, uh, the Parthenon. Um, you can't see the Acropolis uh, from here. We, uh, we were across from the Temple of Wing, Winged Victory on the Acropolis in Athens. Oh, it sounds like it was a, an awesome trip. Oh, yeah. Incredible yeah. experiences. Now, back here in our neck of the woods here, I'm sure that everybody has probably gone up Trout Brook Drive and seen the Children's Museum, that, that big whale out in yeah. front. Yeah. What did you have to do with I, that? My children helped to build that, uh, my three kids. And we got a, a sorority from uh, Central Connecticut State University that helped us build it. We had to get the cement on all in one day so it wouldn't crack. So you needed a, a, a huge uh, labor force. So you were worked with Robbins Barstow. Robbins he was the Barstow is in, in that picture, yeah. Wow, okay. So you actually have your fingerprints all over this get way Yeah, up, huh? I worked on the tail and the hump of the, of the sperm, uh, 60 or 65 foot bull sperm whale. Wow, wow. <laughs> Oh my goodness! And also, you're—I know you like to uh, uh, hike. You're, you're very being the having wrestled in Marine Corps. You still like to do some uh, stuff yeah. like hiking. Yeah, uh, I, I, I was rock climbing with Mark Stampiglia, but you know, Connecticut is a great state for hiking. Well, uh, where? Tell us about how you. What, what? What is that right there? What is that? Antlers. Uh, this was on one of my hikes. Uh, Where'd you I found come across this, that uh, antler uh, in a, in a deer park on Lamentation Mountain, and uh, I've got a I've got a poem uh, that I could read about uh, by all means. Uh, antler is, is the title. Is, is it about the uh, about that antler you found? Yep. Yeah, read it to uh, us if I can find it. <laughs> well, that is what you have there. That's one of your two published books of poetry. Yeah, Particles of Love, Incomplete Poems. That's your most recent one, and I see one over here, Songs of the Spirit. Songs of the Spirit was 2004. Are, are, some, of these, are some of these poems based on your, uh, you know, like your, your experiences, your trips, your trips and your hiking and your yes. travels and so on? Uh, there was a kind of deer park that I found at the top of Lamentation Mountain. Where's the Lamentation Mountain? It's in, in Meriden. When you get up to the top, you can see Silver Lake in the distance. 
this is Antler. <clears throat> On Lamentation Mountain in the green and shadowed deer park, found an antler from the past, a sign of what? What battles fought, what triumph, what despair of loss, what, for what brown-eyed doe did this stag's antler toss? The disdain, the furious hate, the sparks from the wild hoof rocked and clash of antlers in the mountain night. What lifetimes lived down centuries found in the green and shadowed deer park on Lamentation Mountain. Wow, very beautiful. Uh, and I wrote another one uh, uh, in relation to uh, my parachute jumping, poem from a parachute, if I can find it. Uh, here it is. So with uh, a pyramid, uh, there's a lot that's spiritual about, about the pyramid uh, and very ancient. Uh, witness the mind among the monoliths through ruined temples seeking around a fallen sphinx's end an eager heart is peeking mind searches through this necropolis followed or pursued by heart eternally uh, later play my part I coming on scene see ruins and weep building legends religions histories over my own remains. Wow. <clears throat> Beautiful poetry. L let me ask you something. All the years that you spent as an educator at the collegiate level, what aspect of it did you find the most rewarding? Oh, was it, was it, was it teaching the, the, your, your, sub, the, your topic, the subject? Was it interacting with the kids? Was it uh, what, what? I think it was interacting with the students. That was uh, the most uh, compelling thing, the most uh, important thing. Uh, I, I, uh, I got the most out of, out of that myself. I had conferences with all my students, at least uh, two conferences with, with each student individually as well as the uh, classroom activity. Well, aside from the poetry and, and the literature and being familiar with Melville and various, uh, various people like that, was there, what, was the, what, what, what is it that you really found, found yourself striving to inculcate in these young minds? Well, <clears throat> I started uh, uh, with Justice Beach from the Education Department. Uh, uh, an, an organization for uh, humanistic uh, teaching growing out of humanistic psychology developed by Abraham Maslow. And uh, <clears throat> we tried to make uh, college teaching more humane uh, and emphasizing the, the humanistic values, the highest values. Uh, Truth, goodness, beauty, justice are some of the highest uh, values that Maslow emphasized. And those qualities are, are, are in all of us. Yeah, they at our best. But the, uh, so the idea then is to, from your perspective as a, as a professor working with them, was to maybe tap into those qualities and to uh, assist the students in actualizing their own inner spirituality and compassion and love and yes this this is what the humanities do at their best uh, great literature emphasizes these higher values well all the things that you've done we're, we're, we're just a few minutes to go unfortunately but uh, looking back at your at your down the road you've traveled uh, is there one, one something that you, that you that makes you the proudest of all of your numerous accomplishments that you've shared with us, what, what, what makes you proudest of all? Well, in terms of my ego, uh, the many uh, excellent uh, evaluations that I got from students. So one, one of my students uh, said I was the most uh, inspiring teacher that she'd ever had. 
And I, I got um, many comments like that. That's a real, that's a real compliment. Sure and I, I attribute it to uh, Ekinkar and uh, humanistic psychology, especially. And what was the toughest, the toughest thing in the road, down the road you traveled? What was the toughest thing? Any, any, what was the hard, the hardest? Well, the students that I couldn't reach in, in any way, that uh, I, I didn't really get through to, that were, were too, uh, I don't know what the word is, uh, uh, jaded or um, sophist super sophisticated or uh, um, cynical. Right, right. Wow. Well, very good. Well, what, what uh, so... Also, with the Ekinkar, with the spirituality and the mysticism, what's your most important belief? That it's, you... uh, it's Ekinkar. Uh, I realized uh, I've had a numerous uh, spiritual experiences that relate to Ekinkar, and Ekinkar has made me um, understand them much more. It, it, it's the, the greatest spiritual teaching in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Well, the um, but you people out there can, you can. I, I'm sure that they can probably with the technology today. They can, uh, you can uh, Google it, uh, check it out online. Ekinkar, E C K, A N K A R, A N K A R, um, and you've got uh, books, songs of the spirit. That you can check out on Amazon. Uh, at any rate, uh, thank you, thank you for for being with us today, thank Jack you. Heitner, and uh, it was wonderful. When we'll see you guys next time and call up to share your journey. We want to hear about your journey. Thank you very much.